Welcome to the Intel Network Builders Technology vSummit series. It's time now for our session on accelerating service innovation at the edge with Intel's converged edge reference architecture, part of the Network at the Edge vSummit. Lenovo and Intel are collaborating closely on addressing the challenges with edge and bringing to market products and solutions that accelerate services innovation using a foundation that allows for a modular future-proof, scalable, and open platform to deploy, manage, and monetize edge computing. To tell us more, I would like to welcome Tim Verrill, Senior Principal Engineer with Intel, Frances Guim, Principal Engineer at Intel, and Chadi Gadi, Director of Business Development, COSP at Lenovo. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'd like to start by asking everyone what trends we are seeing in city and industry-based edge deployments. Sesk, let me start with you. Yeah, I think that what we've seen over the last uh, few years is that uh, edge is really evolving not in a in a, in a in a singular location, right? So we're seeing more, more trends that go from deploying services on smart cameras or smart devices down, down to private cloud and connecting that as well with, uh, with the public cloud, right? So it's really an end-to-end -end multi tier architecture where you have to comprehend different challenges in terms of power, in terms of, of security, in terms of uh, service consolidation and so on and so forth, right? And that's something that has to impact or really impacts the end architecture, how you design end-to-end -end the, the, the edge infrastructure. And another important uh, point here is that in, ter in terms of the services, uh, several years back, uh, most of the, I mean, I would say that the, probably the most uh, uh, relevant use case was content delivery, but things are evolving over time and still content delivery is one of the big use cases that we see in on all the different tiers of the, of the edge, but also the new use cases, emerging use cases around AI, around video analytics, around analytics are becoming more and more popular, right? So I think that we are seeing uh, more and more uh, uh, variants in terms of, of, of services that are available and providers of those services. And that's something that we will uh, uh, pro probably comment more uh, during the talk today. Thank you. And Chadi, what trends are you seeing in city and industry-based edge deployments? Yeah, so just to add to what Sask uh, mentioned, uh, that we see edge being deployed uh, across multiple tiers, uh, uh, which basically requires different types of form factors to be deployed at each tier. Uh, not all the locations have the adequate power uh, to run uh, you know, data center grade servers, so smaller form factors with more optimized uh, power consumption as well as thermals are, are a key requirement. Um, that to add, basically you have uh, different types of services as SS mentioned that are gonna be running on top of this, these, these, these edge solutions. So a common uh, platform uh, or solution to manage basically the edge end to end uh, from an infrastructure perspective, but also from a service delivery perspective is becoming uh, extremely relevant. Thank you, Chaddy. And Tim, what are some of the deployment scenarios you see today? And is this creating any issues? Um, yeah, so some of the uh, deployments, or a lot of the deployment scenarios we see today are including um, appliance-based or point solutions. And this creates a lot of vertical sort of solution stacks, which works for each one of those individual services, but it's really not scalable. And, and what we are looking to do now is, is to provide an, a horizontal platform or on top of which all of these services can be deployed. Thank you, Tim. And Sesk, how is edge computing shaping delivery critical services? Yeah, I think that one of the important aspects that uh, that team and, and also, also Chadi alluded to is that uh, it's a very, very complex and, and multi, let's say, solution uh, um, ecosystem, right? And we have different modules that may satisfy different type of functionalities. And to, today they are packaged in a in, in siloed architecture, right? Uh, and one of the things that we we as Intel have been working for the last uh, couple of years in, in what we call the converged edge architecture, that basically what we try to do here it's to define a framework, conceptual framework that can translate uh, requirements into in, into different modules that that you can implement depending on on your 
on, 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 on your deployment model, right? And the idea is that we uh, provide a, a mechanism that basically are considering the customer requirements, which could be, okay, that customer is more keen on security or is more keen on, on, on TCO, and, and, con, and taking into account as well uh, the, the, the location requirements, which could be like the places where the customer can deploy the, 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 the services, which could be base stations, smart, uh, sent, uh, a street cabinet, or could be central office, or could be uh, on-premise on uh, operations, like uh, one, uh, one room where they can put some IT facility on it. And, and each of these uh, locations has different requirements in terms of power, thermals, and, and even security. And finally, taking into account the, the requirements that, that you have from the services themselves, right? So different customers will aim different services from surveillance, content delivery. And basically, the idea of Converged Architecture is to factor all those requirements and translate them into specific modules that can be uh, packed together in, into a solution that is that combines multiple verticals into the same uh, infrastructure, right? And, and Converge Edge Reference Architecture is, is one instance of the Converge Edge Architecture that Intel, Intel is uh, providing uh, as the, uh, to the ecosystem, which includes uh, several key aspects that allow to increase service density and improve uh, uh, or pro provide high, higher level of, of security into edge deployments into multiple locations. And, and using, like, it's important to say that it's not only a hardware appliance, it in, includes uh, uh, elements from the software stack using openness that allow to uh, increase service density, uh, then reducing TCO and, and tackle other important aspects, such as, the, as I said a, a, a few seconds back on, on security. Thanks. And Tim, could you add some insights here? I'm sure one of the things that we're seeing in the industry right now is there's a lot of new ISVs, startups, um, smaller companies that are initiating um, these use cases for the edge. And their deployment models tend to be a little different. They're much faster time to market, much more focused on cloud native and, and getting to um, microservices where they can scale out as opposed to deploying something very large right from the get go. And this is changing the dynamic in the edge deployment to where the support requirement for VMs is much less than the support requirement for cloud native. And the management of the network therefore changes too. Thanks, Tim. And, and Chuddy, would you like to add some comments here as well? Yeah, so just to echo what uh, Tim and uh, Sask mentioned, uh, we're seeing obviously a lot more cloud native type uh, applications that are being deployed. Uh, there are still some applications that are VM based, uh, but for edge to really scale, that's kind of the direction that I'd say the industry is headed towards. Us at Lenovo, uh, we've developed basically um, a solution that encompasses some of our own hardware, and, sorry, our own hardware and some of our own software, but we've also partnered uh, with the likes of nearby computing to provide basically that end to end uh, solution. Um, when deploying Edge at different locations, obviously we need to be able to uh, manage uh, and maintain those uh, those specific uh, devices. Uh, so automation becomes essentially key, and this is where our our Lenovo Open Cloud automation uh, comes into play uh, by essentially onboarding, uh, auto discovering, and onboarding uh, the different operating systems onto these different Edge platforms. So you don't need to send you know certified technicians to the various locations to deploy uh, basically your edge infrastructure. Um, that layered on and that integration, that, that, that little open cloud automation integrated into nearby uh, computing's nearby one orchestration system uh, essentially provides an end-to-end -end lifecycle management where nearby can now deploy a variation of different uh, edge applications, uh, whether they're CNFs or VNFs uh, or just uh, straight up edge applications such as AR, VR, uh, gaming, et cetera. Um, and again, uh, as we alluded to, all of these different applications uh, can be run on to a common platform or common infrastructure, all managed from a single pane of glass. So the openness of the solution and, and, and basically the modularity of the solution is what we had in mind when developing this. And it's key to a lot of our, our engagements with customers. And uh, we'll give a few examples on some of the use cases that we've been engaged in a little later on. Thank you. Sesk, what key challenges are we seeing in city and industry-based edge deployments? 
Yeah, I think that if, if you look overall, I mean, there, there are many challenges that we are trying to address with Edge, given it's a, it's a greenfield technology in, in, in most of the uh, cases. But I think that if, if I have to pick two of them, I think that the, the, mo the most, uh, the top one would be like the the common end-to-end uh, -end management uh, and deployment model architecture for uh, for the for the different end customers, right? So as we said at the very beginning, so we have uh, end customers which they are not mapped into a single vertical that they may manage different locations with different thermals, different um, ways of, of connectivity, 5G, LTE, um, wired connectivity, IoT type of connectivity connected into, into different edge locations that are today managed in a, in a different way, right? So I think that the first uh, challenge that we're trying to address is to have common methodologies as, as Chadi was mentioning with, uh, with, uh, with the Lenovo edge architecture that they can manage in the same way devices that are uh, providing some first level of services, but out in the, we, using the same infrastructure and the same tools, you can deploy the same service and move, move it into a base station and, and if it requires more power processing, you can move with the same infrastructure uh, down into the into the near edge, right? And and this end end to end holistic uh, uh, architecture, it's 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 one of the big challenges that we are trying to address here. And I would say the second one, which is truly something that we need to address as as ecosystem in general, is that the one of the big big challenges that we are facing today is that as, as Tim earlier said, right? So most of to, today, the, the end solutions, basically the services surveillance that are provided or, or CDN that are provided into the into their cast, end customers uh, come from either small companies, startups, or even or even bigger companies. But in, 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 in general, that what we're seeing is that most of these uh, software providers, uh, they're very uh, capable and they know very well the application domain specific insights, but they, for them, are facing the challenges in infrastructure, facing them challenges on different types of hardware, it's, it's, it's really complex, right? And I think that one of the important uh, work that we are trying to do uh, together is try to see how, how we can make the, the edge in general more accessible and feasible for, for those ISVs, which at the end of the day will allow them to scale into multiple different deployments from different customers and different uh, uh, edge providers and, and make at the same time uh, the, the, the edge providers uh, making them more uh, uh, capable or, or let's in, uh, or scale uh, with uh, better TCO numbers on how to deploy those, those ISVs. Okay. I have a question for all of you. The requirement for differentiated services and experiences in, is increasing. Cesc, let me start by asking you, what are you hearing? Well, as, as we already discussed, the end-to-end the -end picture is one of the most important elements for edge appliances and deployments, right? It's not a single location, it's a multiple location where you have traffic and flows that go from one place to the other. So one of the things that are more relevant or that, that come more frequently into, into the discussions with end customers and deployments is the the end-to-end -end aspect and how, how you can achieve uh, service level agreements or service level objectives in, into the edge and, and discussing in, in most of cases the, the interplay uh, of the different components that we have in, into these infrastructures, right? Not, not only at the compute level and acceleration level, uh, but as well connecting these within in the context of the network. So how you are uh, moving bytes in from one place to another place, but as well even like for the access uh, uh, domain, right? So uh, taking into account things like 5G slicing and how you can connect all the dif different tiers and different uh, solutions that we include as part of the end-to-end -end, uh, solution with uh, uh, to achieve this service level agreement that is, is so relevant to, to make the, the TCO numbers uh, fly for, for edge appliances, but as well provide the, the right level uh, quality of service that customers and users are expecting from these deployments. Thanks. And Tim, what else are you hearing? Yeah, so some, something to add to what Seth said there is a lot of new types of telemetry that people are not used to looking at that we're going to have to include and include into that management and orchestration. So understanding everything that's happening on your edge platform and what the impact of that is on the service level objectives for the services and applications and the SLA you're delivering to your customer. And then under, taking that information and placing the workloads in the in the right location in the network 
and scaling out across the network where you can deliver the service that meets the objective of the user. And this will change over time and quite possibly change during you know each day as the amount of inference, for example, you need off of a specific camera changes and the other functions that that same edge location is performing, you may move some of those capabilities off to one higher further, one layer further up the network, and then focus on, on your specific server lo service level objective for the video inference. And then as the, the type of traffic during the day changes, you're moving it back again. But this needs to be very dynamic and a, a sort of configure once and walk away. And, and the customer is not going to want to have to be manually doing any of this outside of their instantiation time. Thank you, Tim. And Chaddy, are you seeing an increase in the requirement for differentiated services and experiences as well? Uh, absolutely, we are. So as Tim and Sask alluded to, right, uh, KPIs and SLAs, uh, telemetry are extremely important, specifically because uh, you're deploying edge compute um, and trying to basically optimize it as much as possible. Uh, there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of automation, as I mentioned before, when it comes to deploying and managing the services. But as Tim uh, mentioned, there's also needs to be some uh, automation AI uh, within basically the service delivery mechanisms to essentially make those adjustments on the fly. Um, all of this combined, we're seeing also demand for a lot of single box solutions where customers are expecting basically one platform to run uh, you know, a variation of, of, uh, of, of applications slash ISVs on top. Uh, one of the most common trends that we're seeing is with when it comes to private 5G and try to consolidate uh, that uh, those use cases onto a common platform. Um, we remember, a lot of these private 5G solutions are going in factories and different manufacturing plants in, in the cities. Uh, so the notion of putting you know, a rack inside a factory is not uh, necessarily acceptable. They don't necessarily have the right power thermals, uh, as we alluded to before. So having essentially uh, a more optimized uh, way of deploying Edge and basically deploying it onto a, a single box, uh, specifically, like I said, for private 5G, is one of the trends that we're seeing. Uh, and without having the right telemetry and SLAs to make those adjustments and essentially uh, move workloads around, it's very difficult to achieve that. So this goes hand in hand with all the effort and the work that we've been doing with, with uh, the Intel team to achieve these uh, different uh, different use cases. And Chaddy, these use cases, you alluded to use cases um, earlier in our conversation as well. Are there any examples uh, you can share with us? Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of, we have several engagements with many customers in the different uh, market segments. Uh, there's quite a bit of buzz, like I mentioned, around private 5G and the efforts to uh, essentially uh, start deploying private 5G. Uh, this is applicable to, you know, smart cities. Uh, it's applicable to manufacturing. We're seeing it in the auto industry. Uh, we're seeing it um, in mining oil and gas. Um, and the use cases that basically are coming from each of the different market segments uh, vary. We, we see quite a bit of the manufacturing in particular. We're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, the, the need for a lot of video analytics in smart cities. Um, video analytics, but also AR, VR. Uh, so the list is, uh, you know, there, there are many, many use cases, but when you really start looking at the specific market segments, um, they're pretty much focused on a handful of use cases right now. And with a solution uh, such as the converged edge reference architecture, adding additional use cases or newer ISVs when, uh, when required is, is basically a key factor in deploying such a solution. So that's one of the things and the challenges that we're addressing is the ability to, to add new use cases on top. Thank you. And Tim, any uh, further examples of use cases that you can share? Yeah, some, some of the changes we've seen um, quite COVID related. So, uh, you know, the video analytics, video inference built on top of Sarah has been um, quite popular. And now with COVID, there's a lot more sort of thermal cameras detecting people with, cam um, with the temperature um, understanding who's wearing masks, who's not wearing masks, how's your social distancing going, um, where you're developing crowds of people, and, and enabling um, in a smart city or healthcare 
sort of environment, how, how you manage your public safety and, and how you get data about what's happening in your town, city, inside your factory. Where. And Sesk, any use cases you want to add? Yeah, I think that one, uh, expanding a little bit on what uh, Tim said on the, on the COVID uh, uh, area, right? I think that one of the things that, that we've seen it uh, is that uh, the, the pandemic in, 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 in the positive way uh, uh, has been speeding up some, some of the, these new type of uh, use, usages. And, and for instance, we are uh, doing like real, real pilot on, on trying to help the, the, the hospitals in to include more advanced analytics so that they can improve the, or have uh, more assistance when they do the diagnostics and, and try to alleviate a little bit the pressure that the hospitals have We're doing AI and, and related use cases like doing uh, uh, AI inferencing using X-ray type of uh, images or doing uh, a speech recognition and trying to transcribe the, the, um, the discussion between the, the patients and, and the doctors and, and trying to find out, you know, like when there's someone that gives a, a positive, so there is a, an automated engine that basically is capable to g given a set of contacts that the person has, so automatically reach out and, and make automatic uh, uh, survey, so there's a better way to, to, uh, uh, to trace potential uh, uh, positives on, in, in COVID. And another inter related area that we are seeing interesting uh, use cases is, for instance, on the on the uh, remote uh, assistant, right? So uh, Chad is going to be covering on on the bus, but we there are some use cases when people uh, can, like the expert, can stay at home or at the office, and basically uh, helping someone on on the on 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 the on the field to root cause and identify like potential. Uh, issues, right? And and you you don't need to have that person physically traveling to all the different locations, right? And you can have one expert that can can uh, help on 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 multiple uh, uh, facilities uh, across the, the the globe in potentially. Thank you, Sesk. And Chadi, can you share any initiatives or deployments mapped into the previous use cases and architecture approaches that you described? So one of the use cases that uh, we've been working on in collaboration with our partner Selnex as well as Nearby Computing is on a proof of concept with BASF uh, in Spain. Uh, essentially, this is uh, a converged ed reference architecture that incorporates basically Lenovo hardware and, and, and basically Nearby One uh, managing the entire infrastructure um, and Selnex is basically doing the end-to-end -end system integration. One of the use cases that uh, we're, we're looking to deploy here is basically um, as Sesk mentioned, the remote assistance, which is basically an augmented reality service that's essentially running on uh, the edge compute platform, uh, where essentially wearing uh, the AR goggles, you're able to uh, remote troubleshoot or remote, uh, uh, basically remote troubleshoot the, the, the specifics. Um, and there's also basically um, an application, additional application to do fleet management and essentially uh, vehicle tracking throughout the plant to ensure that uh, essentially uh, the different uh, vehicles are, are are where they're expected to be. So all of this is basically part of the applications that are running into this uh, into this edge platform. And the the idea to add additional use cases in the future is, as mentioned prior, is something that can easily be achieved uh, by leveraging basically such a platform. And Sesk, are there any other initiatives or deployments that you can share with us? Yeah, I think that one of the interesting projects uh, that we have uh, for the next uh, two to three years is uh, a pilot uh, that we will be doing with uh, nearby Celnex and, and, and Lenovo and, and, and other partners in the city of Barcelona, uh, which basically we're looking into, in, into uh, try to define or uh, uh, kind of a role model in terms of the smart city of the future, right? And and try to deploy in, into into a scale and in 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 the city of Barcelona multiple different types of use cases that are mapped into into different verticals and and again having one single architecture that that manages all these uh, different tiers. I think that one of the interesting aspects of of the of this pilot is that that willing in encompass. 
uh, like uh, not not only like uh, as a pure pilot. So we'll be uh, working with uh, with the city of, city hall of Barcelona to try to make uh, something that they can deploy at at scale uh, after the the pilot. Working with uh, municipalities, uh, 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 police departments, and firefighters departments to really provide uh, assemble all these different use cases that we have into something that is incorp incorporated with their current uh, methodologies. Right. Final question for all of you. When you look back on this work 10 years from now, how do you think this will change how the industry delivers new experiences to their users because of edge compute? Tim, let's get your views first. Um, yeah, I, I think as we when we look back at this, we're going to see that what we've enabled is a really rapid growth in um, deployment of edge services. And some of the things that we looked at now and we're dealing with now that seemed um, like large problems to solve are going to seem relatively trivial as, as we look back. And the, the explosion of new services and the time to market for those new services, I think is going to be really rapid. We're going to go from many, many months for deployment and for new ideas to days and weeks. So the type of thing we saw with COVID and, and rushing those services into the edge has in many ways really helped us get for the, the next layer. Now we know how to do this much faster and the type of services are going to be things that we can't even really comprehend right now. Things that we didn't or are not envisioning as a service will, will all of a sudden be there and the, the growth and the type of things that get deployed is going to be much like we've seen in the uh, smartphone industry over the previous 20 years, 15 years. Thanks, Tim. And Chaddy, how will our work on edge compute today be viewed 10 years from now? Yeah, so I'll echo what Tim is saying. I believe that what we're building here is basically stepping stones for, you know, new wave of, of, of edge applications and services that uh, will vastly improve uh, user experiences, more immersive uh, in general. Um, and, you know, as, as, as Tim mentioned, I think uh, the speed at which these uh, services will be deployed and the time to market will be greatly uh, reduced. And I think uh, it's just a testament to essentially where the market's headed with, with these types of services. Thank you, Chetty. And finally, Sesk, what would you see if you were to look back at this work 10 years from now? Yeah, I think that one of the things that we'll see changing uh, dramatically is how uh, services uh, are, are implemented, they're, they're developed. Today, we're seeing that services are, are, are basically uh, kind of optimized or, or implemented for a particular type of, of deployment with particular circumstances, uh, uh, ambience and stuff like that. And I think that what we'll see is that uh, services in, in 10 years will be uh, will mutate us uh, by themselves and basically adapt and learn on how they they need to be optimized or even how, how to perform better better the tasks that they have to do and and together with this uh, rapid increase of go to market that's going to help having the services themselves being automatically configured right and and evolving and e e even developing new features as as they understand maybe using ai that there are some parts of the world that they need to do that can be augmented by other algorithms by, by other types of, of activities. And, and I think that uh, this, this kind of uh, mutation will have a, an interplay with the infrastructure that will be more smart and that the, all the end-to-end -end orchestrators that we've been discussing today, they will evolve as well together with the, with the applications, right? And this relationship on, on how uh, services auto-evolve and, and how they are managed by the, by the infrastructure that's going to be as well uh, evolving uh, in uh, in autonomous way, right? And and uh, the infrastructure will be capable to learn as as as, as edge evolve on how to better manage uh, the applications, how the applications behave, uh, and and stuff like that. Which today we have started putting some of these uh, foundations in the work that we do, but there's uh, still a long way to go to the final vision. Thank you, Sesk. It's certainly going to be a decade full of opportunities. For now, though, thank you, everyone, for taking part in the session today. And don't forget to watch our next sessions in the Network at the Edge V Summit. We have a session on engaging the Edge developer community with openness for a faster and optimised development cycle. 
and also warn on how the Rural Cloud Initiative is spearheading the digital transformation of rural America. Goodbye for now.